Hello and welcome to Smurd PV. Today is a very good day. We have X Men vs. Apocalypse, the 12 Marvel Omnibus. Now, this is one that I've been excited for for quite a while. Um, I can't remember why. I think it was um, probably when I started rereading um, X Men again in the early 2000s. This was probably one of those first stories that I was eager to read and one that I read. And to be honest with you, I can't really remember it. Now, this Once Upon a Time came in um, two kind of epic books. Um, and they were cool. I liked them. I sold them. And I was very glad when this one was announced. So the Dauntless Dozen. This is very nice. It's very cool to see that they've gone back to this whole covers on the back scenario. Which... If I'm being honest with you, takes it out of sync off the other two omnibuses close to this. But I love that they are still working towards completing the 90s. There are not that many oversight hardcovers that we need to achieve the main X-Men books. So, what does this collect? Uncanny X-Men 371 to 380 and Annual 99. X Men 9, 91 to 93, 95 to 99, and Annual 99, X Men Unlimited 25 to 26, Cable 71 to 78, Gambit 8 to 9, Astonishing X Men 1 to 3, very short lived series, basically just for this, Wolverine 145, 149, spoiler, um, <clears throat> he becomes deaf, and they believe he gets killed in there, and well, that was a scroll. Uh, X Men 59 to 60, X 51. Okay, that threw me off. And 8. It sounds very bizarre. Not sure what X 51 is. Anyone knows? Tell me. Uh, X Force 101. Still next to X Men 1. Blah, blah, blah. Right, so very cool. So let's get this dust cover off. Let's see if I can do it like. Damn it, I'm not going to be able to do it on the camera. My camera's gone like that. Underneath the dust cover, we have the synthesis this side. You want to pause it. I'll try and go a bit slower. And we got dad and son there. And then we got the careers over here. And Davis. He was in a lot of things, um, especially... In uncanny around um, he did a Chris Claremont run uh, the new age if that's what you want to call it he did a good run on that I think he's famous for Excalibur I think he did a lot of work back in those days on Excalibur and this is underneath the cover they've gone with this lovely awesome rounded back in Let's see if I can do this carefully damaging the book Come on, let's see if we do that side. Okay, it's not perfect, guys, but you can see it is very, very cool. Very nice, I dig that. Now, I don't know what that's from, but that is awesome. Just look at Apocalypse's mouth. He wants to eat those X-Men. Okay, so here it is under the thing. You know, Cyclops has a big part, and here are all the writers, pencilers, the inkers, the colorists, the letterers, and all the other team that make this book happen. And then we got Warlock Enslaved. And then we got a previously, so this just gives you a little sprout of what's going on before. Um, so the 12, if I remember correctly, was teased in, I think, the 80s. Um, it was teased, and this is about it, that kind of hint coming to fact. And basically it's around Apocalypse. I'm not going to pretend to remember everything that's going on in this book. But it's around Apocalypse. Wanting to send his next um, ascension. Now, I can't even remember who he picks to ascend into. Whether it's um, Nat Gray or Nathan. Um, but he decides that he has a host that he wants to take over. And... Wolverine becomes deaf and he gets his adamantium back. And there's all sorts of stuff in here. 
Um, and I think, if I remember rightly, I don't think fans really took to the story very well. Oh, I don't think it was such a good ending that they liked it. Um, but I don't think I mind it. I just, it's been a while since I read it. Now, I guess the big things of this is the fact that um, Magneto joins them as part of this 12. Oh, I think he collects 12 mutants. Um... I'm not gonna lie, I'm I'm kind of struggling to remember the ins and outs of this. I remember Colossus and Sarah having a really nice relationship around this time. Oh yeah, and there's the thing with Mikhail in the other dimension, that was pretty cool. There we go, we're going to Shattering. So this is like so there's a few episodes a few episodes. I say that all the time. There's a few issues that lead up to this story. Um And this is the iconic one where Death is hunting them. And it's quite brutal. And I think this is where they discover who Death actually is. Oh, wait a minute. First of all, Wolverine gets killed, which they think is impossible. And then later on, they discover that Death is Wolverine, and that dude was just a scroll. And it was all like the secret evasion began. Except it hadn't. But um anyway, I'm, I think we get the backstory here. We get some of the backstory here. Maybe not, maybe. I can't remember. I'm just gonna babble on until you get sick of hearing me. Anyway, there's some really nice art in here. Hey Death first is Hulk, that's pretty cool. Oh, I love it. The, the cable art there. So, yeah, if I remember rightly, I like the story. I don't think everyone did. And, you know, uh, spoiler. So, if you don't want to hear a spoiler, stop looking now. Because I'm about to spoil the whole book for you. Spoiler alert. Apocalypse kills Cyclops. Not. Um, well, he does, but not really. We'll get him back at some point. There is, this is a re... It's not a bad arc. I mean, it is quite a big, big running story. I just think people were hoping for Sank a, a better ending, perhaps. It just wasn't there. It just didn't exist. It would have been nice to see that issue thrown in here about the 12. That would have been pretty cool. I think I would have dug that. Um, and then we got these weird... Um, Ages of Apocalypse that I I can't remember what the what on earth what they were about, but it was um I guess alternate realities around Apocalypse. So I'm glad that they're in there, and um, this doesn't just end with the Apocalypse story as well, which I like. It um, continues into just before we get the Revolution series. In a minute. Let me get there in a minute. Where um basically all um I think it's to do with the high evolutionary. Um he takes away mutant powers and there are a lot of deaths with the Neo. Um don't remember the Neo, you're not missing much. But um that's pretty cool. But anyway, um, it doesn't end well, and I think the X-Men almost lose. There we go, and that's just saying that next issue, Claremont's back. Then we've got this bit at the back, which is like extras, which are cool. We get some art going on there, some more picture art there, which is nice. Details about the Summers Cable, Wolverine, some more little paper. Here we go.
Okay, so there are 47 issues in this book. So that is a nice amount of issues for an omnibus. And you got quite a variety. You got X-Men, you got Cable, you got Gambit, you got Wolverine. And you have got X-Force and X-Man. So there's, there's quite a variety in this omnibus. And here it is next to the Revolutions Omnibus and the Eve of Destruction Omnibus, which has the search for Cyclops as well, which follows on from this book back here. And this follows directly after the Powerless storyline as well. So just to get a feel for how this run works, we got Uncanny X-Men 371 to 380. And then on here we have 381 to 389. And then down here, 390 to 393. And in terms of the main X-Men story, X-Men, uh, the 991 series, we have 91 to 93, 95 to 99 in here. Um, I can't remember why it would be like that. Um, with that missing issue, I need to check that. And then on here we have X-Men 100 to 109. And then down here we have X-Men 110 to 113. So um, other than that one issue, which I'm not sure whether, where that is, I'd have to have a look at that. We pretty much have a whole run, which is very, very cool. So from my perspective, this is a really nice omnibus and um, a great addition to anyone's collection. Even if you're not sure or you've not read it before, it's a nice one just to grab. You can probably read it as a standalone story as such without thinking of the bigger picture. I like the bigger picture and I like the overall X-Men as a journey. Um, but this is nice on its own. So like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Facebook. My page is SmurdP. Follow me on Twitter at SmurdP. No idea what I'm doing, but I'm there. And as always, embrace the geekiness. Take care. Goodbye.